wading through my bills in the morning as I typically do first thing in the morning before I start the day and I come across uh, this package which gave me this shirt this you can't see it very well it says beekeeper practicing social distancing for years and a note says dear Ian and family we want to give you this little present to sh to you as an appreciation of what you do and share we learn a lot from your channel we also have our own YouTube channel it's called bees are funny and they go on through here there so what these girls are trying to achieve is 1,000 subscribers and basically they're putting out content about bees and beekeeping and just awareness to love and respect bees and they asked for me to mention this on my channel just to promote theirs so I thought that was pretty cute I went to their YouTube channel and watched their latest video and gave me a smile to start the day which is very nice and I just thought I'd thought I'd just mention this here the first thing this morning I appreciate people who hustle and I appreciate people who have enthusiasm and initiative and I like to promote that so if I could just put this down here So to Yara and Maliv, I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's a promotion of your YouTube channel, so make sure you just slip by and take a look. Maybe give it a subscribe and help them get to their 1,000 subscriber goal. And maybe start your day out with a smile. Today we have three yards left to split off and we'll be done the first round split. So it's nice to be able to knock off uh, this first round right off the mark. These hives have progressed, they've kind of leaped forward on us. And if we weren't on time here, I think we'd be running into swarm issues. But we've gone through and we just slapped down these colonies, just harvested a bunch of strengths from them give them some extra space and it'll be holding them uh, next week we'll be going around further skimming and then after that we'll be going around and just you know fussing with the hives just to bring them up bring them down just kind of equalizing out a little bit so it's good to be able to have the weather which has allowed us to get a whole bunch of work done these last few days extremely long days uh, we've been keeping up to the cells, so that's good. We haven't had to pinch too many off. And everything seems to be chugging along here quite nicely. The only uh, challenge, I guess I would say, is, uh, well, making up these splits, we've been always fighting to be able to find enough bees to be able to cover the brood as we pull them into the splits. And I think that's a result of our cold spring. Uh, these hives have just, you know, lagged and slow and confined for such a long time and then finally the hives experience warmth and the queens it's almost like they went for broke and she stretched that nest out she stre stretched it out to pretty much the max capacity of that hive and those bees took every single one of those eggs and turned it into larvae and progressed it into developing out into bees. So we have sheets of brood in these colonies and that's what we're harvesting off through these splits. It's just because she stretched this nest out so far that you know they're using absolutely every colony dynamic within that hive to be able to maintain that brood. And we're pulling off this brood into splits and Kind of changing the house changing all those dynamics around maintaining that work maintaining all that brood a lot of some of the cases we can't pull enough bees from the colony to be able to help out um, you know hold maintenance on all that work we're trying to capitalize on so we've been having to go in and pull down uh, other units just to harvest a few bulk bees to be able to provide enough to maintain all that brood one thing that's been helping us is it's been 30 degrees for the last few days, so that's, that'll help 
a smaller bee population manage a larger nest. Uh, and it's just, I guess I'll wait and see. I'll see in about two weeks whether or not we are able to balance everything out properly or not, just by seeing if we uh, wasted some brood to chilling. But that'll come. We'll see if we'll see how things pan out after the work just kind of follows through here. The first day we started split, I actually brought that first round of bees inside to sell them just to protect them from the cold. And then after that, we're seeing like a day after that, we're seeing 17s, 15 nighttime lows, daytime highs of 30. So it's been just like a whiplash on trying to manage this workload and trying to keep ahead of the growth and just maintaining all those colony dynamics we need to pay attention to to be able to allow continued progress forward. Uh, but I think after today I'm going to feel just a little bit relaxed and relieved to be able to get through this first round and to hammer down these highs without experiencing too much swarming. No, not too much. We didn't experience any swarming. And then just kind of next week go through, take a little bit more time and just even out these colonies, skim off more splits and maybe enjoy the work just a little bit more.
This is one of my favorite mating yards, basically because I get the best uh, acceptance from this yard. And it's laid out just textbook. I mean, we have, this is a gravel pit, right? An old gravel pit. So a clear open space. These hives have access to clear open sunshine. I have a windbreak all the way along here. It's kind of in a bit of a de depression, so it's nice and calm down here all the time. Lots of natural forage around. And I think more specifically, well, I have a bee yard in this gravel pit, but I don't necessarily pick that bee yard as being useful for mating with these queens. I mean, the bees will do what they want, but typically this, uh, this area will, will be set up with a drone congregation site from that yard because the drones typically fly uh, the least furthest. They stick pretty close to the yard or the hive that they fly out of and they go up and form a congregation site somewhere. And I imagine it'll be somewhere along this area here because they like depressions like that. They like elevation drops for some reason and they just pick the areas like this but these queens, I imagine these queens will fly up and fly away because their strategy is to do more time flying to the congregation site than uh, hanging up, hanging around up in it. So I have yards um, a mile that way, a mile and a half that way, and this way two miles, I guess that's a little bit farther away. But uh, these queens, I imagine, will be booting it that way towards my other yards, which they will be establishing the drone congregation sites within those areas. So the queen will fly, what's the math on it, like something like 10 minutes to get to the drone congregation site, spend roughly three, five minutes up mating with the drone. She does it very fast, just like pop, 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 she's mating. And then she flies about 10 minutes back. So she's flying roughly 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes uh, on her mating flights. Whereas you think of the drones, they fly maybe five minutes and then they're spending, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes up in the congregation site. Then they fly back, you know, two, three, five minutes to get back into the hive to refuel. And that strategy, I guess, just provides the drones with the ability to hang out in the congregation sites more often. The strategy for the queen is to fly away and mate with as many drones as she can from, you know, another colony. So she's, there's less inbreeding. So that's pretty much, I think, the strategy behind that. Very interesting. Now I got these girls set out here. I'm just looking through a few and <clears throat> Typically, I make these nukes up a little bit stronger. So that one's all right. That's about what I want to see, three to four frames of bees. But uh, we have all this brood and we're trying our best to be able to gather enough bees to be able to cover all this brood. And just so we don't waste any to chilling when you get a little colony, it's a little bit skinny. This one's skinny. So obviously there's one frame of brood, one and a half frames of brood, and bees covering that. So I'm counting one, two, three seams of bees. So that, that should be all right. These bees can maintain the work and allow that brood to emerge. Uh, it'll look a lot different in, you know, seven to 10 days. This has been a little bit of a struggle, just finding enough bees you know, you just open up the lid and it just, first thing you think is, you're just a little skinny. And if there's any type of drift, uh, it's not gonna do the small ones any good. So we've done the best we can. We just gotta stop fussing. We'll drop the cells. And if there is losses, we'll just take the losses because of that. But for the most part, everything looks satisfactory. It seems like this year we're just pressing the boundaries on absolutely everything. Everything we're doing, we're just, you know, pushing everything to the limits, pushing everything to its boundaries. And it just seems, this year just seems like I've never experienced beekeeping before. I have all these strategies and methods to get all this work done, and I'm following through with them all. And it's just, 
we're, we're having to modify what we're doing as we go to be able to match up with the challenges. But that's what makes this business interesting. You just keep all those basics in line and then you just use those basics with uh, the tools you have available, right? So thank God for this machine. It just takes all the pressure off my back as we're doing all this work. You know, we load onto the truck with the forklift. We offload everything on the truck with the arm, fill up our nukes. We load it onto the truck with the arm, then we take it off the truck with the arm. So my daughter, she worked with me last year on the farm, on the honey farm here. And she kind of jokes that my occupation is loading and unloading things. I'm a box picker. At any rate, feels good to have these sixes done. We're on to the fives now. We're going to be filling these fives with uh, the second round split. We're just going through and just skimming some of those bigger ones that need another brood frame pulled. And uh, get a, just kind of slap a bunch of them out there, get some queens mating. And just maybe, maybe just take these 15 true hour days and turn them down to 12. That'll feel good.